The GTX 1060 vs RX 480 debate has been one of the most hotly debated topics since both cards were launched this summer. The reason for that is simple. They're both affordable and cost almost the same. We've even done a few tests here on the channel comparing both these cards in titles like Deuce X and Gears of War 4. But now that the holiday season is upon us, gamers might be looking for a solid upgrade on their existing systems to play some of the latest titles. Nearly four months have passed for both these vendors to patch up their drivers and update things in preparation for games like Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, Battlefield 1 and Titanfall 2. So where does a GTX 1060 6GB and the RX 480 8GB line up now? Welcome to our performance update for them, where we'll be putting these cards through a huge battery of tests, including more than a dozen of games in DX11 and DX12 at 1080p and 1440p resolutions. I won't be touching on overclocking though, since headroom can vary widely from one card to the other. This is going to be a big one, so before we move on, quick message from our sponsor. The Z9 Neo by Zalman brings all the right features on a budget. With a large windowed side panel, five included fans, and an excellent interior layout with super simple cable management. Get it now, link in the description below. Now, you might have noticed we have four cards lined up at the table, and there's a reason for that. Two of these cards are reference-based, which means there are no factory overclocks or custom triple fan cooler design, whereas the other two cards are slightly overclocked out of the box for better results and have upgraded heatsinks. This should give us a clear representation of the performance gain you can achieve when you decide to spend a few extra dollars. So let's start with Team GeForce. The first one highlighted here is the EVGA GTX 1060 6GB Gaming that retails for just $250 before rebates. While it might not look like that much, this is a very important little graphics card. Unlike the ridiculously priced $300 Founders Edition we've originally reviewed, this card retails for less than Nvidia's baseline $260 cost uh, for the GTX 1060 6GB. This is a basic GTX 1060 without any significant upgrades, and what I like about it is its compact form factor at just 6.8 inches in length. It also features a single large fan to cool the GP106 core, and I think this would be a perfect fit for micro or even mini ITX build. Moving on, we have the GTX 1060 Superclock from EVGA that retails for $260. So that's a $10 premium over the basic gaming edition, but the exact same starting price that Nvidia first discussed at launch. A few key aspects of this card is that the core clock gets an increase of 100 megahertz and it features a heavily upgraded, but still very compact heatsink design. While this version utilizes the same three plus one phase PWM and PCB as its reference clock sibling, that's where the similarities pretty much end. The Superclock variant features an extensive heatsink design with a copper core, integrated heat pipes, and an extensive fin array, whereas the standard model that has a very simple anodized aluminum setup. This should theoretically yield better temperatures and even provide additional headroom for overclocking. Now onto Team Red, and the star of the side has to be the reference-based RX 480 because it still serves as the backbone of AMD's current GPU lineup. While the blower style cooler received some critique at launch, AMD's driver team has been fine tuning this card on the software side, so the performance is now more balanced and the power consumption remains within its specs. I also have to point out that finding an RX 480 8GB GPU at its $240 launch price is a bit challenging as most reference based models float around the $250 mark before rebates, just like several of the GTX 1060s like EVGA's gaming. Sapphire's RX 480 8GB Nitro Plus takes things to the next level. Priced at $270, which is a $30 premium over the reference launch price, it is the most expensive among all these cards, but it packs a ton of features. The core clock speed reaches up to 1342MHz, you get a heavily upgraded PCB, uh, RGB LEDs that can be controlled through the Trix software suite, quick disconnect fans that can be easily swapped out, and a highly efficient cooling system. That's a lot for an extra $30. You also get a backplate with this card, and while I'm not a fan of the design, some of you might like this Transformer themed look. There's a small cutout in the backplate where you'll be able to locate a red button. This button acts as a hardware based control for the LEDs, and it's bordered by a small VBIO switch. What I found interesting here is that Sapphire included two BIOSes within this card, one of which is a more efficient and quieter preset, while the other setting houses a high performance mode, which ensures that 1342MHz score frequency can be achieved more often. Oddly enough, the location of the power input connector is on the rear edge, and while that might not affect installation on most mid-tower cases, 
it can limit Nitro Plus's compatibility with smaller and more compact chassis. So without any further delay, let's roll out the benchmarks to see if Team Red or Team Green offers the best bang for your buck. Starting with 1080p in DX11, the Superclock 1060 and the Nitro Plus RX 480 were playing a cat and mouse game fighting for the lead. So if I were to put it in simple terms, it really boils down to what titles users are interested in. One interesting thing is how well the RX 480 cards do in many of the newer games. For example, in Titanfall 2, an Nvidia Gameworks title and Call of Duty Infinite Warfare see AMD cards far out front while Nvidia does very well in Battlefield 1 and some other titles. Switching to 1440p in DX11, and these are the results. We see the same trend with the GTX 1060 Superclocked and the Sapphire RX 480 Nitro Plus fighting for that lead, but things are even closer here with the cards pretty much tied. Meanwhile, the reference cards fight back and forth and it's almost impossible to determine a winner. AMD seems to have really closed the gap. Uh, let's see how this translates into some very basic numbers. As you can see, while the reference RX 480 was pretty far behind back in July, it has now almost completely closed the gap with the reference GTX 1060. It really does look like AMD has been improving on their drivers with their new architecture, and more importantly, in new games, this card does very well indeed. Now onto DX12. Here, the Sapphire RX 480 Nitro Plus took the lead in pretty much every one of the titles, outperforming the Superclock GTX 1060 over and over again. Even the reference-based RX 480 did surprisingly well taking second place in front, and even the Superclock card, while the reference GTX 1060 tended to take up the rear. Nvidia's cards don't seem to like Microsoft's new API. That trend continues to an even greater extent as the resolution increases. And here we are in DX12 at the high resolution of 1440p, and there's no doubt about these winners being the two AMD cards. But did AMD really increase their lead in DirectX 12? So here you have it, and this chart put things into perspective. While the RX 480 has been able to narrow the gap with Nvidia's GTX 1060 in DX11, it is also able to further expand its lead in DX12. There's absolutely no denying the potential of AMD's architecture as more titles move towards this new API. Whew. Sorry for the chart-heavy video, guys, but this one needed to be done. The results really do speak for themselves, as AMD has made some serious inroads towards improving the RX 480's performance against the GTX 1060. Even though it's extremely hard to find an RX 480 for $240 right now, even at $250, I feel like it is now the winner from a pure budget-friendly perspective. AMD has been able to massage its performance to the point where it completely writes against the GTX 1060 in DX11 and tends to dominate when DX12 is factored into the equation. But what bothers me the most is trying to find the card at its initial launch price. If you find this card for $240, I would blindly pull the trigger, no questions asked. Now, if you're willing to spend an extra $30 to get better results along with features like RGB lighting and a custom heatsink, the Sapphire RX 480 Nitro Plus will not disappoint. The GTX 1060 and particularly EVGA's well-priced Superclock card, on the other hand, is highly competitive, and I think it would be a good choice for titles like Overwatch, Doom, OpenGL, and Battlefield 1 in DX11, three of this season's most played online games. And so that concludes our performance update between the GTX 1060 and the RX 480. Boy, this has come a long way and uh, the results sure took an interesting turn since the last time we looked at them back in July. Um, let us know your thoughts about this comparison and uh, which one of these cards would you actually pick? Looking forward to your responses. I'm Ibar with Hurricane X. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.